So I'm going to be short and sweet. The Soma was a gun a lot of us enjoyed because it was our form of a minigun. And I know you're excited about this weapon, but it is not the best in class for assault rifles. Not really. But is it worth your attention? Most definitely. Now, let's go ahead and get into today's video. Let's begin today with how the Soma will handle without any mod script. And with that, we're going to start with a couple of free shots. Now, when it comes to the Incarnate Soma, it really will depend on how you build the gun. Because there are two ways to build it. You can either build it for the way the gun changes for its Incarnate, or build it for both the normal and the Incarnate form. So, once you get a couple of headshots, which does scale with multi-shot, you'll see underneath my cursor, you have gained a little bar. This does scale with multi-shot, and then you press your secondary fire button. And it will change the function, and how it looks to make it stronger, as you see with the new little swirly we have gained on it. With the Incarnate active, it is now, well... A full auto and very accurate shotgun. It's a tad slower in its fire aim, but with it active, you will get a tighter spread as you see. And it's a lot more accurate. Your damage will slightly increase and it'll be weighted more towards slash. Your multi shot will increase to a base of 8. And you'll see an increase in your crit multiplier, your overall status chance, and the base damage across the board. Sadly, with these increases, there are going to be a downside or more. Uh, that being, you'll see a decrease in your crit chance, and as you obviously saw, your fire rate. And, weirdly enough, per pellet will have a lower status chance. For the Prime, it's about 3%. But, with these downsides, does it make the gun unusable? Not even slightly. As you can see, even unmodded, those damage, those damage numbers are not bad. You're getting crits, you're getting good numbers, and there's a ton of slash being applied. But... That's enough of seeing it unmodded. Let's go ahead and go over the evolutions. Your first evolution is obviously to unlock the Incarnon. But with evolution 2, you'll get your first options. That being Fortress Salvo and Fortifying Bloodshed. Fortress Salvo will give you a plus 12 damage and plus 4 punch through when your armor is over 450. Which is nice. Next up is Fortifying Bloodshed, which increases your damage by 10, a little lower. But on bleed kill, you get 100 overshield. 100 overshield being okay, but obviously there are better ways to get overshield. So for the evolution 2, your best in the slot is going to be Fortress Salvo. Next up, evolution 3, which gives you your next choices, that being Rapid Reinforcement, Practiced Grip, and Kinetic Battle. When it comes to the best in slot, it will vary person to person. But let's cover them first. Rapid Reinforcement gives you plus 50% reload speed, which does apply in both the normal and the Incarnon form. Incarnon being able to swap faster and the normal being able to reload quicker. Next up, you have Practice Grip, which gives you plus 50% accuracy, which applies in both forms as well, but in my opinion, is not that good. Finally, we have Kinetic Battle, which will give you minus 50% weapon recoil. Now, this is very useful, but when it comes to these, I'd still say... That the middle option is the one that no one really picks. But the first and the third option are interchangeable. If you like being able to reload faster and swap in between forms, it's a better option overall. But if you don't mind the three second reload, and I think it's like a four second swap, you don't need to go reload speed. You can take weapon recoil, which can save you an axle slot. But I personally will be going with rapid reinforcement for evolution three. Finally, Evolution 4, we have Fresh Havoc, Fatal Affliction, and Zeroed In. Fresh Havoc gives you plus 6 damage per reload from Empty, which will stack up to 12 when you reload twice. Next up, we see a repeat from the per Burst On Prime video. Fatal Affliction has returned, which will give you a plus 40% direct damage per status type affecting the target. And like I had said in the Burst On video... It is like this forms of it's like this weapon's type of conditional overload. It will, it's basically the same benefit as galvanized aptitude, but without the increase in the status chance. So it's not exactly the best option, especially from earlier. We found out that there was like a three percent status per pellet on the Incarnon. Finally, we have zeroed in, which will give you an increase in critical damage multiplier by 0. 0.6. To me, this is the useless option of the bunch. 
The middle one has its uses. This one, not so much. 0.6 isn't going to take you that far. But when it comes to best in slot, I believe it to be fresh havoc. Because having plus 12 damage added onto your weapon is a phenomenal thing to have, especially since you will be reloading quite often enough for it to always be stacked. Next up, let's go ahead and go over the builds. Now, when it comes to today, I will be giving you guys two builds. Now, these builds can be applied to the normal Soma Prime, normal Soma, and the Incarnon. Instead of doing three, four videos on covering every type of thing I could do, I like to lump them into one. This way, you guys don't have to go and scroll around the channel looking for a build that I may have used in a different time frame. So, there'll be a non-Riven, a Riven, and these apply to the normal gun and the Incarnon. So first... Let's go over the gun. As you see, we have 2.4 impact, 9.6 puncture, and 12 slash. This gun is primarily meant for slash. Low dispo, pretty high crit chance, pretty low status, good crit multiplier. So, when it comes to how I build, I'm not the biggest fan on viral slash. I can do it, I can use it, if you want to use it, go for it. But with the non-riven, I'll first be showing off a corrosive build, and then I will show you what happens when you use viral slash. So... With a non-riven build, we have Galvanized Chamber, Serration, Shred, Critical Delay, Corrosive, Crit Damage, and Hunter Munitions. Primary Merciless is a option, I recommend it, but you can also use Primary Deadhead for the minus weapon recoil. We'll be doing both, I will try both. So, let's show off Primary Merciless with no stat bonuses. And remember, this only has one, for, uh, not Fortress Alpha, sorry, only base standard stats. It, I haven't reloaded this thing once yet so it will not be getting the plus 12 damage. So, let's see it. As you see, the Incarnon spikes up fast, and once you get the kill, it starts rolling, because armor does not matter when you have corrosive. So, let's turn on the Incarnon, because now we have still no extra damage. Let's see what happens to these enemies. Still just, shre still just shreds through them, like they don't exist. Obviously, it would be doing much more if we got the plus 12 addition, but obviously, I don't have that yet. I'd have to waste a ton of bullets. But, let us show the other side of the build. Let's go with Viral Slash. There it is. I was like, where's Rhyme Rounds? So, still the same amount of uh, status, still same everything. Let's go ahead and get the Incarnon started. So... This is bog standard, not no Incarnon active. As you see, it still can kill. Incarnon active. Still roughly the same, but it's a little bit slower. Obviously, I can show this off with the extra bullets, so let me quickly swap frames. And waste just a ton of bullets. Put down my reservoir and just waste ammo. Now, as we had covered in the evolutions, when you reload, you gain plus 6 damage. Now, do it one more time to gain the full benefit of using the gun. And there we go. Now we're all out of bullets. Hopefully when we swap back, we keep our bonus so I can continue to show off. Where is our focus? Good, we kept it. So, we also get our Fortress Salvo bonus, and now let's try it. This is the Viral Slash build with the extra damage added on. As you see, it does help having that extra damage. As you saw, we killed the guy behind them before we killed the front guy. Activate the Incarnon. And it still does quite well. Now, let's swap it back over to Corrosive. Where did it go? There it is. Now we go back to Corrosive with Primary Merciless, which I still recommend as the Arcane option. Obviously, we gotta get the first kill, and since I'm not on par with them, it's really hard to see over them. But still is performing. And still just shreds through them. That extra little bit of status, even though it's not a lot for pellet, still helps quite a bit when it comes to killing. So, overall, when it comes to using no Riven, both options will work. You could go Corrosive or Viral Slash. It is purely up to the person. Next up, we have our Riven build. As we saw, 
I use corrosive on this, but viral does work. When it comes to the ribbon build, as you see, I drop serration. We still have roughly the same stuff, except in this case, I have heat and corrosive. My incarnon, my incarnon, my ribbon is not a bad ribbon either. Has damage, has crit damage, has crit chance, and a phenomenal negative. It's zoom. Ignore the amount of rerolls. I got this roll at 20, but I was greedy and wanted to keep going to see if I get something stronger. As you see, I'm using Deadhead. I will first use Merciless, though. So, this is with our full bonus. So, we have Fortress Salvo and plus 12 damage from Fresh Havoc. So, with Corrosive Heat, here we go. As you see, I already have my Incarn on, and those enemies are gone. And all those enemies are gone. We pop our phenomenal incarn on, and nothing exists. Nothing exists. Now, obviously, when I kill the last set of enemies, what if I used Deadhead instead of Merciless? Well, firstly, you're uh, <laughs> you're going to be aiming quite high for the entirety of your usage of the weapon with out having the Exilus slot being like Stabilizer or. Uh, yeah, without having Stabilizer, you're going to have a little bit of an issue hitting shots, but obviously you could, instead of using Reload Speed, use the Recoil option. So, once again, this is with uh, Deadhead. I'm going to save those so I can use uh, Viral and show you all the other side. So, this is with Deadhead. If I could hit my shots, it'd actually probably be useful, but I can't aim with them. As you see, with Deadhead, we have a lot less Recoil, and... The weapon still hits really hard. Now, what happens if you use Viral instead of Corrosive? Well, let us see. So, in this case, you would be swapping out High Voltage for Viral, and like most, you would take off Thermite Rounds and go hunting munitions, which I really don't recommend. Having that extra damage type does help. Now, let's see how it works. As you see, it's a tad bit slower than using the Corrosive Thermite Round build but it's still usable. But I still think that it would be better to just use it with Corrosive Heat, because that is my preferred option, since most of the time, if you're fighting armored enemies, enemies with high amounts of armor and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and swap that back over to the preferred option, that being Thermite Rounds and Corrosive. Now you may be saying, oh, well, it's just heavy goons. Uh, what about some Xmas units? Well, obviously I can add those. Let's add some Xmas units. Also, let's drop some of these bombards. Let's drop that down to about five, and let's get let's get some alloy armor in there. So once again, using uh, Umber to show off the full thing because we have Fortress Salvo and Fresh Havoc. So how does it work now against all these enemies? Well. Get the deadhead bonus. And just with the normal Soma, as you see, it still shreds through alloy armor, ferrite armor. Nothing really gets to live. Now let's pop the Incarnon. Okay. What enemies? I don't see enemies. There's nothing alive. Wow. It's like corrosive can do quite a lot when used in the right circumstances. Next up, I'm going to show how I like to use the weapon together. Now, like I had said, I'm going to use the build I prefer to use. So, with my... I'm an avid fan of just shredding through the armor and not worrying about the problem. So, once again, I'm going to show it the same way I did in every other video. I pop my three to gain the extra armor. We once again still have Deadhead. We're using Corrosive and Thermite Rounds. As you see, with Deadhead active and my Incarnal now on, nothing gets to exist because they can't stand having no armor. I missed. It. But you may be saying, oh, it's not Steel Path. Oh, it's not this. Oh, they're not moving. Well, fine. The show was Steel Path was still paused AI. Get this to get my stuff back on. Oh, wow. Mm. Help. Turn off the Incarn on. Man, I wonder, why is this build still working? 
it must be because they their AI's paused, isn't it? Let's go ahead and clear out this field real quick. It must be because their AI is paused. Most definitely, it has to be. I don't think so. Watch what happens. Wow, I can still pause their AI. Oh, wow. Well, let's act like I don't have my card on yet. Seems like they're a little confused. Oh, I have my card on now. Boom! Just melt. Melts through them. And as you can tell, I'm getting them for the Wisp buff even to hits them. They don't get the option to exist. And you obviously wouldn't be able to just do that as quickly with Viral. It would work because you're on Hydroid, but is it as much fun following the meta as it is just having fun? I don't think so. I'd rather have fun than just follow the meta, wouldn't y'all? Especially with the, my minigun, just bang, 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 bang. It's just, it's just fun. This gun is fun. But obviously, this is a controlled setting. Let's go ahead and go over to Steel Path to prove its strength. Now, here we are in the Path of Steel. As you see, I have my Kavad I always bring with me, the Soma, my Hydroid, and, well, a little sneak peek on my hip there. Seems I went with a weapon. So, we're in the Exterminate, so let's go ahead and get started. Once again, I am just bringing my Soma and some other weapons. In this case, we'll be doing, well, many an enemy. And there's a shield, and the ferrite, eh, ferrite armor, alloy armor, and much more. And hopefully, if we're lucky and it spawns in a reasonable time frame, we'll get a Acolyte. Now, I decided to change it up, because usually I do the capture, but this time I decided to do the exterminate. Go ahead and get our first reload of the Incarnon tree. Increasing our damage by 6, and, well, just overall being a bit more of a nuisance to the enemies in this palace, I guess you can say it. I always check to make sure I have them all. Now, the reason I usually don't do the exterminate is because it's just a little bit slower than just doing the capture and killing enemies around the map. Oh, and there we go. The last of our fresh havoc has been acquired. Let's go ahead and pop the Incarn on and go a little crazy with it. Oh, and now we got an Xmas unit to deal with. Well, as you can see, even with having not the most optimal build, obviously, my Hydroid could use some changes, some upgraded uh, mods, some better <laughs> modding to begin with. But, as you see, still, no issues. And we have to find a problem with the build. Everything seems to die in a reasonable time. Just a couple shots to the back of the head. And we got our first Xmas Heavy Goon. Get rid of the alloy armor. And they have ferrite armor. Now this is... Oh. Go ahead and get rid of that debuff on me. Now that was without my boost from Plunder. Let's go ahead and get a little bit of a boost from Plunder. And still, just shreds through the enemy. Obviously, we're not just using our gun. We have our abilities. Let's keep showing off. And as you can see, enemies just crumble. Oh, there went our car on. Back to normal. I think I forgot to swap this over to an actual build. I think my Lex is still using nothing. But as you see, even when surrounded, the gun can handle quite well. Look at that. Let's show off a little of what's to come. There we go. Ooh, baby, I can't wait to make a video on this thing. Alright, that's enough showing off with that thing. There you go, shredded through that thing's ad um, additive armor. Where'd the guy go? Go away. Pop this, and as you saw, we still don't have our plunder. Our plunder went, out, went away already. Ooh, here we go. Even infested. Can't stand it. I think you're a Guardian Exorcist? No, you're the, uh, the one I don't like. Go away. Now, as we just continue to shred through the, uh, I guess, Corrupted? Yeah. 
I will go ahead and ask the same question I asked in the last video. What weapons would y'all like to see me obviously do a review on? Because uh, I could do it on the Lex Prime, which I think I will. I could do it on the Hate, as you see on my back. I really do love that weapon. Uh, I kind of want to do it on the Latron Wraith. Uh, no, Latron Wraith. The Latron. But sadly, uh, I had deleted my Latron Prime well before Incarnons existed, so I'm still missing two pieces of reacquiring that. And sadly, I'm also running out of... Well, I'm out of Forma, and I'm also out of Blue Potatoes. I have no more Catalysts, so I'm going to have to get those again. But please do tell me, what weapons y'all want to see me do... Ow. A review on. I can do the Bratton, some other ones. I think I can do the Boar. I'm just missing a couple pieces for the Boar Prime, which I would love to do. How long we got? Ooh. The Acolyte will be here soon. There we go. Infested. Still got the Infested. What was wrong with that thing? <laughs> Ooh, shit. But as you see, nothing really has made this weapon fight for a kill, really. Everything kind of just crumbles. Obviously, if you're like others, you'll probably go with Viral and Slash. I like my Corrosive build with Heat, because obviously with Hydroid, you're going to be going through their armor, so you ain't got much to worry about. Ooh, we're nearing extraction. Come on, go away. So, I'm going to clear out the last couple of these enemies, and... We'll go ahead and wait for the Acolyte to spawn, so we can show off what happens when you go against an Acolyte. And hopefully it spawns soon, because I kind of killed everything, so I'm not going to have Max Galvanized Chamber. So, I will get back to y'all, take a turn, whenever an Acolyte will spawn. Ooh, flashy, flashy, who are we going to get? Ooh, we're going to get Misery. Go ahead and get a boost real quick. Hi, right, Misery. So that's without the Incarnate active, as you see, kind of just shreds them. How about with it? Okay, kind of punched me over. And, well, so much for a tough fight. I had to kind of go to an entirely another mission, because nothing spawned, and I waited for like 20 minutes, and nothing had spawned. So, that was the Acolyte killed. So, I'm going to go ahead and end this mission, and we're going to go back to the Simulacrum. I'm going to show it off one more time, but with Mirage, just to show it if you had used basically everyone's favorite gunslinger to just show the ridiculousness that the gun can get to with the Incarnate Active. I'll give my final thoughts, and we'll end it there. So, I'll see y'all back in the Simulacrum. All right, we are back in the Simulacrum. I went ahead and stacked up Molt Augmented to give my Mirage a better showing because i still haven't done anything with her I, I kinda, i'm just not a big fan of her <laughs> but let's go ahead and show off how well this gun works with mirage i went ahead and got fresh havoc maxed out multi augmented to the max so let's do it without all the mirrors obviously let's do eclipse first obviously does quite well let's do it with the incarnon obviously same thing, does it quite well. Let's turn it off. Let's do Hall of Mirrors. Alright, get our Arcana back, and now we just shoot. Obviously, I'm gonna be the bearer of obvious news. There is better. There is obviously better ways of using her this way. Uh, obviously, Eclipse ended, so we can quickly apply that again and try to shoot as fast as we can. As you see, it still works quite well. But if you really want to see a gun that does quite well with using Hall of Mirrors and Eclipse, I'll give y'all another taste of a video to come. Yeah. So, when it comes to my thoughts on the Soma Prime in Karnon, or just in Karnon in general, it is very good. It brings back the memories of the gun beforehand, where you would just use it as a absolute bullet hose. Does it slow it down a bit? Yes, obviously it's going to slow it down a bit. That is a downside, granted. But it's still one of the guns we know and love. Is it meta? No. That's like, not even possible. Torrid and some other weapons are meta. Do I care? And should you? No, not even.
even slightly. It's a fun weapon to use. And that is the whole point. Play to have fun. That is how I see it. That's how I will always see it. That's why I try to show non-Riven builds, Riven builds, etc. So, if you guys want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe and hit that bell so you get notified whenever I post a video. If you want to see other weapons, tell me them down in the comments. I would love to see what you guys want me to review. Like I said, I have the Lex that I can do, the Hate, which I have a build for, which I really love. I would love to show it off in a video by itself instead of a video I did earlier where I mix Volt and my Hate. But other than that, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out, my recruits.